You can never have enough clamps. Have you heard that before? I call BS on that. I don't think you need that many clamps. You need enough clamps. But for the most part, people buy way too many clamps. Hi, I'm Robert Daly, owner of Daly Woodworks, and this is the Recreational Woodworker. Today, I'm gonna show you what I consider my essential clamps. Here's most of the clamps I own, or at least a representation of some of them. But in truth, there's only four types of clamps that you really need. I'm gonna tell you what they are. And there's one bonus one that you probably haven't thought of that I'll tell you at the end. Hey guys, before we get started today, I would like to invite you to go to the recreationalwoodworker.com. This is my website and blog that has all of my woodworking plans, how-to tutorials, jigs, furniture, shop projects, tool reviews, everything that you need to know about being a woodworker. We have an extensive blog where it's easy to find the essential clamps you need, how to build awesome tabletops, and upcycling furniture projects. All those different things that you might want to do to be a woodworker. So go check out the recreationalwoodworker.com and let's get back to our video. So before we tell you which ones we need, let's talk about the ones we don't need. So when I first got into woodworking, I was just overwhelmed by seeing these awesome clamp racks that people have with these big, beautiful parallel clamps that clamp up these huge tabletops. And man, like, you know, these people, like, you have like $2,000 of clamps sitting here. Well, I didn't have that much money, and so I did what a lot of people do, is I went to Harbor Freight, bought some cheap clamps to kind of do what I needed to do. They didn't work very well, and a lot of them broke, a lot of them I took back, you know, you can exchange them, but then you get tired of exchanging them because it's not worth the gas to drive up there to exchange them anymore. And then you get a little bit better clamps, and then you end up with a lot of clamps, and half of them you'll never use. So, I've kind of pared down my clamps, and I have what works for me. I build furniture all the time. I do a lot of tabletops. I do a lot of cabinetry, pocket screw assembly, um, a lot of big glue ups. I don't have that many clamps, but I have enough to do basically anything I want to do and anything I can fit in my two car garage shop. So let's talk about the ones we don't need. So the first ones I'd say that you don't need are these big F style clamps. They're junk. Well, they're not junk. They're usable, but really, for the most part, we don't need them. I have a couple of these smaller F style clamps that I do actually use, but there's a better option than these out there, and they're the ones you should buy. So we can get rid of them. See, I've got a bunch of different sizes of F clamps that I don't need. All right, so we got rid of that. What are the next ones that we don't need? <sighs> Somebody's probably gonna yell at me like this, saying these are super useful. I don't think so. These little spring clamps, like there might be a good one out there. Every once in a while they have good uses, but they don't hold tight enough. They break, they're just, they're, they're garbage, they're gone. The next one I tell you that you don't need is this really fancy Craig corner clamp. This thing I thought I would really like, and it's one of these things that some of these things are useful, but they're not essential. We're going with the bare bones. I'm getting started in woodworking. What do I need to have to do it well? This, I don't use it. I thought I would use it. I thought I would like it. Sometimes it comes in handy, but for the most part, I don't need it. Let's see, what else do I have? Hmm, face frame clamps. Now this, I'm a little iffy on. This holds your face frame clamp over the edge of your table. Eh, don't really need those. All right, so now I'm to what I consider my essential clamp. You notice there's more than four here. I guess I should say four types of clamps you need. So the first style of clamp that I would say is essential for any woodworker is the pipe clamp. What I've done in my shop is I've taken my pipe clamps and hung them on a rack on the wall where essentially I can use them just like this and they're stored. Um, I do a lot of tabletops. I'll glue up a huge live edge walnut tabletop right here. 
Um, I did a video called The Day in a Shop where I make that table. Um, it's just a time lapse video, it's really short, but it's just kind of like, here's how I work solo in my shop, getting stuff done. Big glue ups go right here all the time. I show you more about how to use this in my video, how to make a tabletop. But basically I have one, two, three, four, five, and then six over there on the table. Uh, pipe clamps that are about five foot long. You can buy the ends at your local box store. I have an affiliate link to Amazon to the ones I have. Um, and then you go to your hardware store. I buy a 10 foot pipe, cut it in half, and the great thing is, I can glue up anything like five inches, or no, five feet, and I can glue up, I got glue on my pipe, that is a downside with it. Or I can glue up something small with it and I can just leave it sitting right here on my rack. And then you get glue all over your pipes and that. Now, are these like the most high quality clamps in the world? No, you can get a set of these, I think four of them for like 20 bucks. The pipe will cost you about 10, so 30 bucks you have two five foot clamps that'll do anything up to five feet long. I use these for assembling large carcasses. I use these for assembling, sorry, this glue's like bothering me here. This, I need to scrape that off. So I do get glue squeezed out on everything here. That's just part of it. They work, they're great, they're inexpensive. I've never had one break. I do use the little rubber pads off of them, but that's okay. I glue up most things oversized anyway, but it's simple. So I've got some white oak here that I'm gonna use um, to glue this up. I'm not actually gonna glue it up. I'm just gonna put it here for example purposes. So I get it, I get these about right. You can glue, do this on a tabletop as well or your bench top. You take it, you set them here. Everything's about right. You want to get them level. Take up the slack right there. And then you don't have to be perfectly level. Just want it close. And then boom, you clamp things up. And that's a pipe clamp, right? And so that's your pipe clamp. Now, you can use pipe clamps in a lot of different ways. Uh, Jay Bates has a really cool like moxin vise he made out of pipe clamps. Some people have like little short ones that they use for bench hold downs. There's tons of different ways to do it. And the great thing is, is you buy the pipe and you can just cut it down to the length you want it. And then uh, most box stores will have like a pipe threader machine so they can thread it on both ends if you want to thread it on both ends. If you need a 10 foot long clamp, you just go buy a 10 foot long pipe, take the ends off and put them on that longer pipe. It's super easy to get huge versatility out of these clamps. And that's why I like them. Now, I'm going to move to my second favorite style of clamp, which is my dovetail, um, which is my micro jig dovetail, that I can't say it, it's a mouthful. My second favorite style of clamp is the micro jig match fit dovetail clamps. That's a mouthful. Essentially, these are F clamps. I showed you these earlier that I, you know, were like, hey, you don't need them. Notice these are very similar. These are almost the exact same clamp. The difference is this end right here is really narrow and it's designed on a dovetail. So you can route a dovetail groove into um, a work table, a jig, a fixture, etc., and clamp this to it. I'm gonna show you a few different ways I use it here in a second. But it's essentially an F style clamp and so I like these over the F style clamps. And I would say if you had about four of these, you'd be good for a starting point. They are expensive, but they are also extremely high quality. And you get what you pay for with these clamps. They're about $45 a pair. I'd have it minimum four pair. I have eight right now. No, no, yeah, I have four pair. But I would say four total clamps like this will be enough to do most things you need to do to get started. And you can move them around different places. There's so many uses for these things. It's just hard to even explain. So another way I use these guys, for example, is I'm gluing up a big tabletop. Sometimes your tabletop will want to buckle, and I don't know if I can make it buckle right now, but it'll want to buckle and it'll like pop out. I have these calls here that I use to hold my tabletops flat. I just taped off the end so it doesn't mess up my workpiece. And then I take my F style clamps or my micro jig clamps and I use that 
and I'll clamp it on both ends and that holds my tabletop flat so while I'm gluing stuff up it doesn't get bows warps that these edges stay lined up and I have those all the way down my work table and so that's called a call you can use basically a call allows you to use a smaller clamp to do a bigger job and I don't need a fancy uh, clamp to do that and this is just some angle iron I picked up at the local metal shop because it's cheaper than the box store and use it that way. So now I'm going to show you a few more ways that I use these style clamps. One of the primary ways I use these dovetail clamps is on my table saw and I use jigs. I have a router fence that works the same way but you see you route these grooves in here and your clamp slides into those grooves. That gives you a hold down that you can move lots of different places. It holds it in place. It's great. So this is my tall rip fence. Sometimes you just need a taller fence to do operations safely on a table saw. So that goes right there. These clamps slide in. And you can see my clamps are dirty. I abuse my stuff. I use it hard. I use it every day. That's why I try to buy quality things is because I'm going to use them hard. So that clamps right there and boom, I have a really nice tall rip fence that holds nice and tight to my table saw fence that I can take off, move, adjust how I need it. The second way I can use this little board is a, as a jointing sled. So I grabbed my piece of white oak that we're using as our example piece here and now I need to get a straight edge on this. So this is a piece of plywood. So that's been has a nice straight edge on one side nice straight edge on the other so if I want to get a straight edge this board has a bad bow I can just overhang it off the edge here a little bit say like an eighth quarter of an inch however much that is take these clamps slide them in lock that down and then whatever this length is I just set my table saw fence set it to the blade run that through and that's going to give me a perfectly straight glue line rip to glue up tabletops, etc. That's how I do 90% of my joining. The rest of my edge joining I actually do with my track saw. So another way I use the micro jig dovetail clamps and why I choose these over F clamps is again the versatility that you get with them. Just a happy accident, these clamps fit in your Fez tool or Makita tracks. And this way you can use them with your track saw and you can use that to hold it to your workpiece to keep it from sliding around. The next way I use these clamps as is for a hold down for assembling uh, face frames, pocket holes. This is why I don't really use that Craig face frame clamp is these are just three quarter inch holes I drilled in my worktop and you can see my worktop has been abused and used. That clamps it together, that's flat underneath, it holds this joint nice and tight, you can screw it together. And that's kind of the most common way I use these clamps, which if I hadn't sold you on these about now, then I don't, I don't know how to, how to sell you on these clamps, but they're versatile. You can use them for tons of stuff. Your mind is really your limit for how to use it. The next clamp I want to show you is the Craig right angle clamp or corner clamp, however you want to call it. It's got a pin that goes into the pocket hole and you clamp it together for right angles. This is probably the most specialized clamp I'm going to recommend to you but I use this all the time because I do a lot of pocket hole assemblies. And so the idea is you're gonna have a right angle for either a drawer box, a cabinet box, something, and you need to hold that piece like that. If you try to pocket screw that together, it's gonna wanna walk on you. It's gonna be really hard to align. Great thing with this clamp is it fits into one of the pocket holes. You align it with your glue, all that kind of good stuff. And then you clamp it tight together and then boom, you have a nice, joint that's going to hold for you. It's going to hold your joint nice and tight. And you can assemble it. So this is the Craig clamp that I would say you could have. They also make these Automax clamps. I'm not a huge fan of them. I don't think they adjust very well. Watch is going to work perfectly this time, but it's just like, I don't know, something about them just like they don't stay adjusted right in my opinion, but same thing holds it at a right angle for you. That way you can clamp your stuff, assemble it. So this, I would highly recommend you pick up one of these Craig right angle clamps. Now to move on to our fourth clamp. Any guesses what that is? All right, guys, you're going to love this one. What I have now for our fourth clamp 
is a 2x4. Yes, a regular $3 2x4. For our fourth clamp, you need a 2x4, cut it to an approximate length, screw a little block on the end, you need a second block for the other end, then you need some shims or wedges. I learned this trick from Izzy Swan on YouTube. He's a great woodworker, you should subscribe to him. But I'm going to show you how this works today. So, I have my boards I need to clamp. I've used my micro jig clamps and my little edge guide to join them. I've got a nice straight edge. I'm ready to glue these guys together. But I don't have a clamp wide enough or long enough or, or even any clamps at all to do this with. So, I'm going to use this. Got them together. Ideally, I would have, you know, five or six or however many I need to do this. I'm going to take my block. I'm going to set it right here. Now, I'm not going to do like this. I'm actually going to leave a little bit of an angle right here, and I'm going to screw it down. <laughs> Boom, right there. That, if I loosen it up just a hair, will pivot. See that? Now, I'm going to take my shims or my wedge, depending on what you want to call it. I'm going to put it right here. Now, I'm going to use my hammer, and we're going to clamp that up. And boom. Those are not going anywhere. That is going to hold plenty of pressure for clamping, for whatever you need to do. If you joint your edges well, that'll hold them together. You just need enough of them going down to do what you need to do. And that's it. That is clamping with wedges. Um, this is like, seriously guys, you use your ingenuity. You can use these so many different ways to clamp things up. The length is versatile. It's cheap. It's easy. This is my fourth way to clamp. Now for that bonus tip I told you about. So we used our wedges. Our wedges are great, right? Sometimes you gotta just clamp something awkward together though, like a circle, a square, a picture frame. That's where your good old ratchet strap that lives in the bed of your truck comes in super handy. So I'm gonna put some pictures in here from some previous projects where I've really used the ratchet straps. But for example here, it's time to unclamp our wedges. So we're just gonna pull out that screw. Boom, wedge is done. We have that done. So now we need to use our ratchet strap to pull this awkward size thing together, right? Obviously, your ratchet strap's pretty darn big, so you have a lot of room. So I'm going to pull out all this extra slack. And we're going to go around our workpiece. We're going to hook it together. Obviously, you'd want to be doing something bigger than this. This is where you probably want to put something on the ends to keep it from digging in. You probably want to use some type of call, like a 2x4 screw together on both sides, whatever that looks like. But then, well, you can see what happened there. This is not the greatest example for this, uh, for this, for this thing. So forgive, forgive the example, but understand the use, okay? So keep going. It'll pull it together and boom, you have something that's clamped really tightly together. It's going to hold. You want to use calls on it because it does have a tendency to want to buckle, something like that. But for really awkward glue ups, ratchet strap is super versatile and super useful. And when you're in a bind, it's easy to make these bigger. So those are my five clamps, four that I use all the time. One that I use when I really get in a bind. Um, wedges are probably my favorite because you can just use them in almost any way and they're cheap, effective. You can start using those today with the tools you have. Um, other than that, pipe clamps, best tool, uh, dovetail clamps. So, hold on. So, you want your pipe clamp, your wedges, your micro jig, clamps and your Craig corner clamps. Those are the clamps you need to do awesome woodworking. So 
before you go and you like this video and leave a comment, I invite you to go to the Recreational Woodworker Facebook group and join us there. We have an awesome community of almost 500 people as of this recording. Join us there. We'd love to have you. It's everything woodworking. Tool, tools, tool talk, beginners, there's experts that's there that help, and it's a community that exists to help people build great furniture. So join us there, subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you next time.